With this Photoshop tutorial, I want to show you some more natural editing. While we want to keep it natural, this still involves quite a bit of advanced editing and post-processing, but as always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. First, we want to do the raw adjustments. And as you might have noticed, there are two images opened up down below. This one is for the sharp subject in the center, while this one is for a sharper foreground. So we're basically doing some focus stacking later on. But let's work on the base image for now. What I want to do first is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast slightly. Then let's work on the exposure situation. I think this shot is a little too dark and what I have in mind is a way brighter version. So I want to bring up the exposure and at the same time, I don't like what the increased exposure is doing to the highlights because we are losing details in the sky. So I want to prevent that by bringing down the highlights all the way. This looks way, way better. Now I'm still not happy with the darkest areas. I want to bring up the shadows quite a bit as well. And by increasing the shadows, we are giving this image a softer look, which I think looks way better for this snowy landscape scenes. We can further improve this effect by bringing up the blacks, just like this. By always having in mind, we want to keep this image natural, but so far we are on a good way. In fact, I'm not even going to touch the color tab. I'm not going to increase or decrease the temperature and I don't change the saturation because I think just like this, it looks perfect. Now I want to head into the effects tab because I want to introduce some more sharpness for the smaller details like those snowflakes or the tree branches. And that's the reason for me to bring up the texture. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity a little bit as well as the dehaze because I further want to improve this soft foggy look, which fits this snowy landscape so good. So I think we are done with the effects tab as well. What I want to do next is to do a little bit of masking and there's not much going on actually. What I want to do is to create a linear gradient covering pretty much all of the foreground like this. And in here, I want to bring up the contrast. So we're just adding a little more depth to the foreground. I think this looks good. However, increasing the contrast always will affect the saturation of the area. So right here in the foreground, you can see it's got way stronger blue tones now. I want to counter that by just bringing down the saturation a notch. And then let's continue adding a little bit of clarity, which also helps to bring out the shadows against those highlights. And let's raise the texture because I want the foreground to be super sharp. Wonderful. Now I still want to make those highlights right there in the foreground brighter. I think I will have to use some luminosity masks later on in Photoshop, but we can try targeting them using a luminance range mask in the camera raw editor. So let's choose this and I want to target these highlights right there. Right away, you can see the base selection of this luminance range mask is way too wide. So I want to narrow it down. Only want to target the brightest highlights, not the midtones, just something like this and maybe make it a little softer. Maybe that's a good selection. However, we of course don't want to make the sky brighter. So what I want to do here is to say subtract, choose a linear gradient and just drag it down like this. We only want to affect the highlights in the near foreground. And what I want to do here is to simply bring up the whites. Thus just doing some kind of dodging here. I think this looks great. Okay, that worked better than expected. Now let's also work on the sky. Here I can simply choose a sky selection mask. This should work fine as you can see. And what I want to do with the sky is to just introduce a little more warmth. So I'm going to bring up the temperature and I'm also going to bring up the saturation. By doing this, we are boosting the colors of the sky without affecting the rest of the image. So I think we're done with the masking. We can check out the before and after comparison. So we started with our base edit here and ended up with this one right here. Looks much better. 
Now, of course, we also want to do a little bit of color grading. So let's go into the color mixer. And again, I want to target the warmer colors of the sky to kind of make them a little more intense. So this means I'm bringing up the red tones. I'm also going to bring up the orange tones. And I'm going to bring up the yellow tones. I'm only using very tiny amounts compared to the images I usually edit, but I think this really helps to improve the colors of the sky. We can tweak it a little more with a bit of split toning. Here I'm just going to target the highlights, going to set up the hue to something warm, and I'm going to use a tiny amount of saturation here. Perfect. Finally, we can also go into the calibration tab and just play around with the blue primary hue, which as I bring it down will make the warmer color tones a little more reddish. I think this always looks great. Just keep in mind, it will also turn the blue color tones more into the aqua color range. Also, I'm going to bring up the saturation here. Wonderful. So that's pretty much it for the raw adjustments. We went from this to this. It's still rather natural. We just have enhanced the colors a little more and brought up the exposure overall. Now what I want to do next is to sharpen this image in the details tab real quick. So always I'm using the same settings, apply a little bit of masking and bring up the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. Now that's it for the raw adjustments of the base image. Of course, we want to synchronize these settings with our image for the foreground. So select them both right click, synchronize settings, check all and hit OK. And once this is done, all we need to do is click on open objects. To do the focus stacking, I'm going to copy this image by hitting Ctrl A to select everything and Ctrl C to copy the image. I'm going to our base image right here and hit Ctrl V to pass it. Then we want to select both these layers, go to edit, choose Auto align layers and hit OK to let Photoshop automatically align both these layers. To do the focus stacking, what I want to do is to simply create a mask since we only need the foreground of this image. And I'm going to use a gradient and just drag it down like this. And by doing this, we get a sharp subject in the center and a sharp foreground as well. Perfect. All we need to do now is to merge those two images by selecting them and hitting Ctrl E. And then we need to do a little cropping as well, keeping the tree nicely centered. Wonderful. Now it's time to clean up this image. Let me duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a, to have a backup. And I first want to get rid of a few sensor spots here, just using the spot healing brush for that. For the record, I have cleaned the camera sensor just yesterday. So for the next few videos, I hope there won't be any sensor spot cleaning. Okay, I also want to reduce the distractions in the background. What I mean by that is those trees right there. For this, I am going to use the remove tool. Let's zoom in a bit and I'm just roughly painting over all those trees. Just going to create the outline and Photoshop will do the rest. So just like that and it fills automatically. Okay, let's hope Photoshop will fix this. That worked really well. So with this out of the way, we can finish this edit. Let's try to make the highlights in the foreground brighter. As I mentioned earlier, I want to use luminosity masks for that. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm switching the blending mode to soft light. Then I'm going to use a plugin called the TK panel. This is a paid plugin, but there's a free version available with all the things you need to do the exact same things I'm doing. So, as I said, I want to target the highlights of the foreground. How can we do that? The TK panel plugin is offering us a bunch of different options to select lights, darks, and midtones. We want to select the lights. So I'm going through the lights mask here. The TK panel will give you a preview of the mask. This is looking a little better, but I think I want to narrow it down further. And with the light three mask, you can see we nicely select those highlights of the foreground. So I want to use the light three mask. I'm going to activate the layer mask mode, hit the free button, and we have our luminosity mask on the soft light layer. 
So on this layer, I'm going to use the brush tool, set the foreground color to white since you want to dodge this area. And I think I'm leaving the brush opacity at 100 for now. I'm just going to paint in a few times over the foreground. So at first, this might not seem like much, but let me deactivate the layer. And you can see there is a slight increase in exposure right there in the foreground without affecting the shadows. That is really, really important. Still, it might be a little bit too subtle. So let's create a new layer again. Again, I'm going with the soft light blending mode. This time, we are not going to use the lights free, but the lights to luminosity mask to widen the range. This time, I want to bring down the brush opacity. And again, let's brush over the foreground. This looks so much better. Now, I also want to brighten up the tree up here. Let's try creating a new layer and choose the soft light blending mo mode once more. Right here in this tree, we don't have much highlights, but we have a lot of midtones. So I want to use the midtones to luminosity mask. And what I don't want to do is to affect the sky, which we do with that luminosity at the moment. So I click on the image layer down below, go to select, and here I'm choosing sky. And I want to use this selection to cut out this part of the luminosity mask. I want to further adjust the selection by going to select, modify, and expand. I, I just want to expand it a little bit by four pixels. And then I want to go to select, modify, and I want to say feather. Again, just a small amount here. And I'm doing this so we get a proper selection around this tree without making it look weird later on when we dodge this tree. So with that selection and the layer mask selected, I'm going to hit Shift F5, choose black and hit OK. So this way we can safely use that soft light layer and a white brush to paint over the tree and make it brighter this way without affecting the sky. Wonderful, this looks great. So at this point, we are almost done. I just think I want to make the colors of the sky a little warmer again. So I'm going to go to the adjustment layers and here I want to use the photo filter adjustment layer. By default, this will cover the whole image, which we don't want. We only want to affect the sky. So what I'm doing here is to make use of the gradient tool and I'm going to create a black gradient going right up over the foreground and into the sky. And by doing this, we can improve the colors of the sky without affecting the snow of the foreground. Now the subject is affected by these warmer color tones. However, I don't think that's a big deal. And finally, I think we could use a levels adjustment layer to just play around with the contrast a little more, bringing this point down further to the left to make the highlights a little brighter and maybe add a bit of contrast by bringing the black point further to the right. All right, that looks great. And I think we're done editing this image. So as you can see, this is still looking very, very natural, just like we wanted it to. I hope this tutorial was interesting and helpful. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.